Keeping makeup on under your face mask isn't impossible, but it's going to take the right products and application tips, which I've got all right here for you today. I've been doing a lot of testing over the past couple weeks, and I feel like I've finally nailed down a drugstore makeup routine that's going to keep product on your face and off of your mask. If you're new here, hi, my name is Miranda. Welcome to my channel where we talk all things budget beauty. If that sounds interesting to you, then become the newest member of the Slashed Squad by hitting subscribe and the bell icon. I'm going to start out this video by telling you what what other beauty YouTubers aren't. If you're not planning on taking your mask off at any point while you're out and about, there's really no point in putting any makeup underneath it. Save your time, money, and product if nobody's gonna see what's under the mask. However, I do know there are some scenarios where you may be taking your mask off in public, such as eating at a restaurant. So if that's the case for you, then I've got you covered. Now when doing makeup that's gonna be under a mask, your first step is actually to put your mask on. As you can see, I have the least makeup friendly mask in existence. So go ahead and put the mask on and take note of where the mask feels tightest on your face and where it rubs if you start talking. These are gonna be the areas that are most prone to smearing or transferring product that we'll definitely want to keep in mind throughout this makeup application. I've already moisturized, so I'm gonna move straight into primer. So this is the Maybelline Master Prime, which is just sort of your basic silicone primer. Now, if you have incredibly oily skin, I would suggest using a mattifying primer. If you have really dry skin, I would recommend a hydrating primer because the rest of this routine is going to be very matte. For my combo skin, this is pretty much enough to keep my skin looking fresh and smooth underneath the matte makeup. So I'm just putting a thin layer everywhere, but also kind of taking care to press the product in to those areas that we noted will have high contact with the mask. Now I've tested a lot of foundations specifically for this purpose, and the best one that I've found at the drugstore to be the most transfer proof under a mask is the L'Oreal Infallible Pro Matte Foundation. Now in general, I would recommend choosing a matte foundation. It's gonna be a lot less prone to transferring, but I'd also recommend choosing a high coverage foundation because you'll be able to get away with wearing thinner layers and less product overall. Now there is also a method to how I'm gonna apply my foundation that's gonna make a difference. First off, I'm not gonna use as much as I typically Typically would. I'm gonna start out on my forehead, getting that all nice and even, since that's what's actually showing. And then I'm gonna move on to my cheeks, and you'll notice that I did leave this cheekbone area bare. That was one of the areas I noted that my mask was pretty tight because of the straps. Then I'm gonna start bringing the product onto the chin. Now at this point, I'm only using what's left on my sponge, which is not a lot, and I'm just moving the product into those areas that are still bare. So these areas are gonna have a much thinner layer of product, but because because we chose a high coverage foundation, it's still gonna look even. And I'm saving my nose for last because that is where my mask is the absolute tightest. Now, if you feel like you need any extra coverage over any discoloration or spots, go in and spot cover them with either your concealer or a little bit more foundation. That way we're only using the product we really need and we're not building it up in areas that don't need any more coverage. Now, this next step is very important. Listen up. I'm just gonna leave my face alone for a little bit. I'll take a little time to do my brows, maybe an eye look, but in general, I just want my foundation to set completely on its own before adding more product. Let's move on to defining the face with contour, blush, and highlight. Now again, this is really gonna depend on where your mask hits you the tightest and if this area is even visible with your mask on. With masks like mine, you can still see a little bit of this area, but I'm not gonna bring the product as far into the center of my face as I typically would. I'm actually gonna stop right about here so that it doesn't actually go under my mask. Today I'm contouring with the Physicians Formula butter bronzer in deep and I'm gonna start pressing the bronzer into the skin and then I'll go ahead and blend a little bit. Now I'm gonna do the same thing with blush. We're not gonna bring the product too far in towards the center of the face. Also, I suggest picking out a pigmented blush. That way you don't have to build up the color. This is the Juvia's Place Serafina blush. It is one of my most pigmented. And again, starting out by tapping while we have the most amount of product on the brush and then we can go ahead and lightly blend. See, that didn't take a lot to actually show up and the key is to keep product very light in areas that touch the mask. Now I'm also going to be applying my highlight a little bit differently than I normally would as well. This is the Honest Beauty Luminizing Glow Powder in Midnight Reflection. And what I wanna do with my highlight is keep it completely clear of my mask. I'm going to focus it right on the tippy top of my cheekbone and apply it in sort of a C motion going from right behind my brow to just under the eye. 
So this is a lot higher than I normally would apply my highlight, but this is what's going to be visible with my mask on. Probably goes without saying, but I'm going to skip highlighting the bridge of my nose, Cupid's bow, and chin. These are high contact areas with the mask, so there's just really no point. I will, however, throw some on my brow bone and a little bit on the forehead as well. Now I'll be honest, usually I'm not wearing lipstick under my mask. Typically it's just a clear balm under there. But when I do want to wear lipstick under my mask, the only one that I trust from the drugstore is the Rimmel 16 Hour Kiss Proof Lipstick. This is a two-step liquid lipstick. So you start out with the color coat, which will completely dry down to be transfer proof. And then you seal it in with the clear top coat, which also adds a bit of shine and moisture back to your lips. Today I'm applying the shade Summer Lovin'. Let me show you how transfer proof this lipstick is. Clean palm. Mwah. Nada. Setting your makeup is gonna be the most important part of this routine. Now, typically I would choose to set my makeup with either a powder or a spray, but today we're gonna do both. The best powder that I have found for this routine happens to be the $1 AOA Studio Perfect Powder. I chose this during my Shop My Stash, which by the way, will be my next video, I promise. And the texture is just so finely milled and light. Not only does it look beautiful on the skin, but it really sets your makeup evenly. Taking my powder on a big fluffy brush, I'm gonna start out by pressing it onto the areas that we noted in the beginning are where the mask fits the tightest. So for me, that was my nose down the sides of my laugh lines, as well as my chin and jawline. Also pressing the powder over my contour blush and highlight because that's where my straps hit my face. Then I'll just go ahead and sweep a little bit over the rest of my face to even everything out. This powder will also do wonders for your pores. <laughs> then we seal everything in with a spray. So this has become one of my favorites at the drugstore. It's the Essence You Better Work Gym Proof Sweat wet-proof fixing spray. With the weather getting warmer, you better believe it's gonna get sweaty under that mask. Not only will this help set everything in place, but it'll also help your makeup kind of meld together better in case you're getting too much of a powdery look. Now that we're finished with makeup application, I have one more very important tip for you. Maybe even the most important in the whole video. If your schedule allows, you want to leave at least a 30 minute window between finishing your makeup and putting your mask on for the first time. This is gonna allow your makeup to set 100%, become one with your face. Leaving it undisturbed for a little bit will help it become more transfer proof. So I'll see you in a bit. Okay, it's been a half hour since I filmed that last clip. Let's put this makeup to the test. Okay, so you can see this mask is pretty snug. It's right up against my face and it definitely is rubbing a little bit as I talk. Also, peep that visible highlight though. Just this amount of contact alone would typically pick up quite a lot of makeup if I were to do my normal routine. So let me show you the inside of my mask. clean. Now I'm going to be completely honest with you. If I'm wearing this mask for an extended period of time, like hours and hours long, then I will start to see a tiny bit of product transfer where the mask hits my nose. That's just the tightest point on the mask and anything that you have rubbing up against your face consistently is going to pick up a little product. However, when that does happen, the makeup on my face looks completely undisturbed. There's no patchiness whatsoever. All right, I'm curious, and this is a no judgment zone. Are you wearing makeup underneath your face mask when you're out and about? Let us know in the comments below. Today's shout out goes to Catherine. Thanks for being a member of the Slashed Squad. And join me over in this video next where I share the best drugstore mascaras for 2020. I'll see you over there. Bye.